In the last video, we explored polypainting and how it uh, works. Now, in this video, what we will do is explore the UV mapping and uh, and texturing, and you know, basically, why you'd want to use something like textures and uh, and stuff. So, first of all, I'm just going to close a few menus here. Um, when you import a model into uh, ZBrush from an outside source like uh, 3D Studio Max or Softimage or Maya or any of the other software packages. When you import a model into ZBrush um, and you start subdividing it, one thing that you probably should do is go ahead and just go into the uh, under the tool menu here, go into geometry and make sure you turn on SUV and then just go ahead and just subdivide your model until uh, you know it's subdivided just enough uh, for your liking. This will make sure that the UVs are smooth and it's just going to make it uh, a lot easier for you when you texture inside of Photoshop or any other uh, application like that. Now, why would we want to use, why would we want to go through the process of UVing and then having to texture onto a texture map instead of just go and texture directly to a model? Well. There's a number of things that are just a lot simpler if you go ahead and actually go through the process of UVing and then texture that way. Uh, for example, what if I wanted to have, um, you know, writing right across here and onto the, I probably should touch that part of the model. Um, what if I wanted to have writing right across the model, you know, uh, doing something like that with poly painting or, you know, even projection master or Z app link or any of the other methods. You know, you can do it, but that stuff is usually simpler if you just do it to the flattest plane. Uh, for example, like if I was going to have one word across here and one word across here, it would work, except what well, the problem that you'd have is right along here. There's a large uh, angle differentiation here. You know, there's a lot big change happening right across here, and you would most likely have to have several projections and fixes in order to be able to get a somewhat decent result. So how would we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we're going to go into the UV map menu. And in here, I'm just going to press the UV map button, or morph UV. This morphs the model into, uh, well, basically to show me how the UVs have been laid out for this particular model. Now, it, all I would have to do in, uh, for example, if I wanted to have the text running across, uh, let me just press it again. Uh, you'll see that this part right here, if we just follow that part where it unwraps right here, if I wanted to have text going right across uh, on a UV map, on a texture, all I would have to do is just write down here exactly what it is that I'd want. I'd uh, basically go right back to apply that texture into my model and then I'd, I would have a perfect wrapping all the way across. Now these buttons here decide the resolution of the texture. So if I have, you know, 4096, it'll make a new, uh, bigger texture. Now this actually controls the texture map, displacement map, and normal map. So if I go ahead and just create, or if I press 4096, and now I press new texture, and now I hover over this, you'll notice that the width and height are 4096. If I go press this button here, and I set the UV map size to 2048, and now I press new texture, you'll notice that now this texture that has been applied to this object is 2048. Now, one thing that I probably should note, um, and actually before I note that, uh, the UV map border, what it is, is if I go ahead and go back into my morph UV, what uh, UV map border does is when I go ahead and create a texture for this model, what ZBrush will do is it will bleed out a few pix uh, pixels right across the border of every single UV island. So this part is a UV island, that's a UV island, and so on, so on. Um, what else? Well, these tools right here are all uh, tools for unwrapping your models. These are fairly old uh, now, but uh, but they still work. For the most part in this tutorial, what I will be using is I'll be using the Z plugin UV uh, Map Master or UV Master, and I'll be using the tools in here. But inside of this tutorial, I just kind of wanted to explore why you'd want to be 
using textures and, uh, and you know just very simply how to actually use them. So in here in a texture map menu we have a few options. One, uh, into alias textures, uh, we can clone textures from whatever we have here into this menu here. Now, what's the difference between this menu here and this menu here? Well, the difference is that this texture menu here, what it shows me is all the textures that are loaded inside of ZBrush. So if I go ahead and just, uh, you know, just load, press here, uh, you'll see all the textures that are loaded inside of ZBrush, but not per object. So this, these are just globally imported textures. What you see in here, inside this menu here, uh, under the tool menu, is the textures that are loaded only inside of this particular object. So if I have multiple sub tools, like these multiple hammers, each one of them has a separate UV map, and each one, if I was going to split all the other hammers into its own separate sub tool, then I would get is I would get a separate texture per hammer. However, these textures per hammer or per object would not exist within ZBrush globally here until, of course, I would use the clone uh, button. So, for example, let me just go ahead and create a new texture from UV check. So right now you'll notice that my new UV tech check texture, uh, first of all, it's 2000 by four, uh, 48 by 2048, perfect. But I created a new texture, and if I go ahead and just go into the texture menu and I click here, you'll notice that that texture doesn't exist within globally uh, within ZBrush. In order for this for me to be able to export this texture to for uh, you know, outside of ZBrush to, I don't know, Maya or Photoshop, I would have to, first of all, clone this texture from this object. And basically, when I press this, this texture gets put all the way in here. And now you'll notice that this texture has been, in fact, put into ZBrush globally. Now, of course, I have a few options. I can flip my textures, do all this other stuff in here. And at the same time, I can export it out and let me just put it into this directory here, overwrite whatever I have here, and like that. So now this texture for this object exists outside of ZBrush. So now let me just go into Photoshop, and let me load in that texture. So now I have my texture loaded in and I'm going to do what I said I would do earlier. So now what I'm doing is I'm going ahead with this test that I said I would do. And let me just rotate it like that and just move it into position. And you know what, this text is actually slightly too small or too big. So let me just do something like that. Okay. So now texture test is written here and let me just go ahead and just save this texture, minimize Photoshop. And now I'm going to import, uh, I'm going to go into the texture menu, import globally into ZBrush first. It's going to be automatically selected. As you can see, my newest texture is here. I'm going to now import this texture into the object and you'll notice that well, first of all, the texture is, uh, well, the text is written backwards, and that's because my UV map is actually backwards. But one thing you'll notice is that the text has been perfectly placed all the way around the model. Now, this is just text, but what if I was going to do something like, I don't know, maybe this is a little bit, well, yeah, anyways, I'll show you. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in a pattern. So what if I was going to go into layer, new fill layer, go to pattern and create something like ooh, this right here. Now I'm just going to go back and save. And I'm going to show this process more thoroughly when I work on the shirt and pants. But for now, I just want to show this example. I'm just going to go back into texture, import, hammer once again. And I'm going to select that texture. And now what you see here 
is not only is the text perfectly wrapped around the model, I also have a very evenly distributed pattern all the way across this model. And notice how quickly I was able to do that. If I wanted to do something like that using Spotlight or Projection Master or ZF Link, this would be a much lengthier process. This would take me so much longer if I had to do it manually using Polypaint. So while Polypaint is very freeform and allows me to paint things like skin very easily, doing things like patterns and texts and more mechanical uh, things and again patterns and you know whatever it may be, um, you might even want to use something like uh, the Photoshop layers to get very specific effects for your layers. You might want to have maybe a rust layer or something else and you might be using the blend modes and blend layers for uh, you know within Zebra or Photoshop to get very specific effects. Basically what I'm saying is, is there's things that are just a lot faster to do if you were texturing directly onto a texture map and exporting out to Photoshop and working within Photoshop and then back sending that that picture back into ZBrush. It's just a lot faster and a lot more accurate to do than if I had to, for example, uh, paint onto a 3D model from a 3D viewpoint. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this chapter. Um, I hope this kind of explains how the texturing process works and the polypaint, uh, you know, process as well in the previous chapter. And uh, I think we can move on with our texturing of the uh, character. Cheers. And of course, before I leave, uh, one thing that I should mention is that you're not necessarily limited to either only using textures or only using polypaint. And the reason I say that is because if I need something to be done very specifically within ZBrush, uh, or, you know, very specifically as far as text goes or patterns go, I can very easily just unwrap my model, do my patterns like this, you know, apply them to the model, and then if I wanted to go ahead and just paint using polypaint and not necessarily with textures, then what I could very easily do is, first of all, I will subdivide my model until it's just the right subdivision, and I'm just going to keep subdividing it until, uh, I don't know, I guess this might be enough for this hammer. I don't know though, but I'm just guessing here. And of course what I might do, might be able to do is, for example, tell ZBrush, uh, first of all, open up the polypaint menu and grab polypaint from textures. So what this is going to do, and first of all, you have to make sure that you're in RGB mode, turn off Z add, and your RGB intensity is at 100. If this is lower, then when you transfer your texture to polypaint, it's going to be not as strong. So make sure it's 100 RGB. Now I'm going to go to, and press this button, I'm going to press the polypaint from texture. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now you'll notice that the texture is no longer on. The texture has been in fact transferred over onto this model. And now what I can do, of course, is I can go ahead and just paint right across it. So let me just turn off this texture. Let me paint with whatever color. As you can see here, I am now painting directly onto this model, which is just awesome. And if I uh, also paint using this polypaint feature here, like I did in a previous video, if I do whatever it is that I needed to do using polypaint, I can very easily then tell ZBrush to grab and make a new texture from polypaint. So now I'm going to transfer all this detail that I have in here into a new texture. So I'm just going to press new from polypaint. And now you'll notice this texture has been updated with all the paint that I have uh, made. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, you know, ZBrush allows you to be very flexible in terms of which way you paint, you can go between both. And um, yes, yeah, so, you know, I can use textures for patterns and text and anything like that. And then I can transfer it to polypaint to do all this, uh, you know, all this manual type of paint stuff. And then when, once I'm done for t uh, transferring my colors out of ZBrush and into another application, I can then go ahead and just create a new texture from polypaint and uh, use this for exporting. So, cheers.